It's Monday, June 8th. Welcome to CGN News. The Guyana Civil Aviation Authority says airlines operating in the country along with airport staff and airline crew will soon be required to comply with COVID-19 regulations as the regulatory body moves forward with developing a draft document. Speaking at the Chetty Jagan International Airport, the Authority's Director General, Lieutenant Colonel Egbert Field, said the regulations are necessary to bolster current procedures. The procedures were finalized by the Authority as part of the first of the four-phase blueprint under the consideration by the National COVID-19 Task Force. The blueprint is expected to guide the reopening of the nation's two main airports to international travel. Bill said the development of the regulations will be done through meaningful consultations with stakeholders. On March 18, the Guyana closed its airports to international travel as part of its fight against COVID-19. The closure was recently extended to June 17 as part of the country's emergency measures. Jamaica's Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett says discussions are in the final stages with insurance and global logistics providers to enable travelers who test positive for COVID-19 to be quickly isolated and repatriated. The move comes as the country prepares to reopen the sector for business beginning June 15. The ministry has done checks around the region and Jamaica is the only country in the Caribbean and arguably the only one in the Americas that has taken on its responsibility to begin negotiations and discussions with insurance and global logistic providers, Bartlett noted. He said that the discussions are focused on a program that will enable low-cost coverage for visitors who come into the country. The minister assures that the cost will be less than U.S. $20 per person coverage that will allow them to be rescued and repatriated once there is a positive case of COVID-19. Meanwhile, he assured that the health of tourism workers will be safeguarded. He said that all workers will have access to a trained on-site COVID-19 safety point person and an on-site or on-call medical professional. In Trinidad, relief grants will be provided to residents within the Kuva, Tabakit, and Talparo districts whose roofs were partially blown off following inclement weather across the country on Friday. Reports of the damage were received from Nelson Street, Freeport, and Ramdani Street in St. Margaret's, Claxton Bay. The Ministry of Rural Development and Local Government advised that assessments were conducted to ascertain the extent of the damage. The Ministry Disaster Management Unit provided tarpaulins to the affected households. The Ministry further advised that the reference letters for relief grants are being drafted and will be made available to the residents on Monday. Now let's take a look overseas. New Zealand has lifted almost all of its coronavirus restrictions after reporting no active cases in the country. At midnight local time, all of New Zealand moved to level one, the lowest of all four tier alert system. And so today, I can announce that Cabinet has agreed we will now move to Level 1 to get our economy fully open again, and we will start almost immediately. We move down to COVID-19 Alert Level 1 from midnight tonight. Under new rules, social distancing is not required and there are no limit on public gatherings, but borders remain closed to foreigners. New Zealand has reported no new COVID-19 cases for more than two weeks. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern told reporters she did a little dance when she was told the country no longer had any active virus cases. Under the new rules, all schools and workplaces can open, weddings, funerals and public transport can resume without any restrictions. Social distancing is no longer required but will be encouraged. The country's borders remain closed to foreign travelers and rules remain in place requiring New Zealanders arriving from abroad to go through a 14-day period of isolation or quarantine. Ms. Arden warned that the country would certainly see cases again, adding that elimination is not a point in time. It is a sustained effort. New Zealand has recorded 1,154 confirmed cases and 24 deaths from COVID-19 since the virus arrived in late February, but has been widely praised for its handling of the crisis. The New York Times opinion editor has resigned amid outrage over a piece by a Republican senator calling for military forces to be sent to cities where anti-racism protests have turned violent. James Bennett stepped down after Senator Tom Cotton's article, Send in the Troops, caused revolt in the newsroom. It backed Donald Trump's threat to use troops to quell unrest. The newspaper had initially stood by the publication, but then said the article did not meet its standards. The change in position came after an outcry from both the public and staff over the piece, published on the newspaper's website last Wednesday. Some journalists did not come into work on Thursday in protest. 
Mr. Bennett, who has been the opinion editor since 2016, later admitted that he had not read the piece before its publication. The Arkansas senator's article called for an overwhelming show of force against groups he described as rioters. Its publication happened as hundreds of thousands of people have been marching across the U.S. in recent weeks against racism and police brutality. There have been violent incidents in some cities. The demonstrations were sparked by the death of African-American George Floyd in police custody last month. Videos show him pinned to the floor with a white police officer kneeling on his neck for almost nine minutes. More than 800 employees signed a letter denouncing the article's publication, saying it contained misinformation. Fitness brands, including Reebok, have cut ties with CrossFit after the company's CEO posted a tweet making light of George Floyd's death. In reply to a public health body saying racism was a public health issue, Greg Glassman tweeted Floyd-19, making a play on Floyd's name and the COVID-19 pandemic. He also called an affiliate delusional in an email for questioning why CrossFit had been silent on the killing of Floyd by police in Minneapolis. Mr. Glassman has now apologized saying CrossFit will not stand for racism. He said he had been trying to make a point about lockdowns that have been put in place to try to contain the spread of coronavirus. CrossFit is a company based on a fitness regimen developed by Mr. Glassman and is incorporated into gyms across the world. These gyms are run on an affiliate model, paying the main CrossFit company for permission to use the name and regimen. That's it for the CGN News. I am Cynthia Shea Clark. Thanks for tuning in.